Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Shark Spartan RS helmet. The number of helmets being released now that meet the new ECE 2206 safety standard is growing all the time, and this is the first of those from Shark. It's the latest model in their Spartan series, and it takes its styling cues from muscle cars and muscle bikes with quite aggressive looks, especially around the chin vent. The RS initials at the end of the name can stand for all sorts of things, but I'd say the intention is the German interpretation of road sport. The Spartan RS is a sports touring helmet in its function, but with more dramatic looks than I'd normally expect from a helmet like that. It has a fiberglass shell, it's got Shark's impressive main visor, as well as an internal sun visor. It's set up ready for Shark's own Bluetooth intercom, has a comfortable liner, and it fastens with D-rings. Well, it does here in the UK. So let's get into the tech details and what the Spartan RS is like out on the road. Helmets with fiberglass shells like this don't tend to be particularly light, and this one follows that trend. It weighs in on our scales at 1,542 grams, which I'd say is pretty average, really, for a helmet like this. Ventilation comes through that dramatic looking chin vent and then a similarly styled scoop up top. Slide the switch down on the chin vent and it opens a route for air to get through the top of the chin bar and come out to give the visor some airflow. Sliding the top switch back uncovers two holes that let air get down to the top of your head. And then there are channels through the EPS that lead warm air to the exhaust vents at the rear just here. The visor has been one of the better features of Shark's premium helmets for a while now, and this lid uses a system introduced on the Spartan GT back in 2020. It has two securing points on each side to give it a firm attachment, and the change is really simple. There's a graduated set of grooves on the left side here that give the visor some resistance as it slides up and down, and you can adjust that tension by tightening or loosening the small Allen screw in this tab just here. As you lower the visor, you feel it clicking over those grooves, and then the central tab comes to rest on the chin bar, which leaves a small gap around the base of the visor. To lock it down, you give it a firm press, and that activates the locking switch. To raise the visor again, you need to press the switch and lift the visor. So this takes a little getting used to, and I found the best way is to use my index finger to push the switch and lift that in one motion. The visor's a variable thickness across its surface with a very reassuring feel. It's got great peripheral vision and also optical quality. I think on a sports bike, you may want a deeper eye port so you can see further forward when your head's angled down, but this helmet isn't really designed for sports bike riders, so that's not a particular criticism. It's protected against mist by a pinlock max vision insert, so the outer edges won't interfere with your vision, and it's a 120 grade, which is the highest in terms of its mist defense. The sun visor behind it operates on a switch on the top of the shell. Like the main visor, it lowers in graduated steps. There are 42 of them so you can fine tune how far you want the visor to sit down. At its lowest, it covers about as much of the inside of the lid as it's possible to do with that middle piece there extending beneath the breath guard. Now, something I always notice with sharks, their sun visors are never anti-mist coated. I'm guessing that's because they're more concerned with optical clarity and they think that an anti-fog coating is gonna reduce the optical clarity. Whether that's an issue for you really depends on how you ride. If like me, you commute by bike and you tend to ride quite a lot, when it's misty in the mornings and then also in the evenings, then an anti-fog sun visor is probably likely to be more important. But if you're someone who only really goes out in ideal conditions, then maybe that's not so important and you'd actually prefer the optical clarity of having one without the anti-fog coating. So moving to the inside, the liner for this helmet is very plush with a brushed material covering the cheek pads and the top of the head. And then the area around the forehead and at the back of the head is a smoother material than the rest of the liner. Then there's a synthetic leather that's used around the base of the neck roll just here, and then in a trim around the eye port. For me, this liner is a step up on the one used in the Spartan GT, especially as it's more securely attached into the helmet. It's all removable, and there are recesses behind the cheek pads for intercom speakers. This lid is optimized for the official shark tooth intercom, and the battery for that sits in this cavity behind the neck roll just here, and that means you can have a slimmer control unit attached to the outside of the lid. If you want to fit a universal intercom, I'd say you have a better chance with a Senna unit as the speakers for the 20S Evo that I tried fit into the recesses on this helmet. When I tried fitting a Cardo Pactalk Bold, the control unit fitted really easily, but the 40 millimeter speakers wouldn't sit down properly in the recesses. The fastening strap for this lid, as I said earlier, is done up with D-rings. That's how the Spartan RS is configured here in the UK. In the owner's manual, it points out that some countries might be getting a different version with Shark's precise lock micrometric buckle as the fastener. 
So let's move on to sizing and approvals. The Spartan RS is approved to the new ECE 2206 standard for use on the road, as I said earlier. That new standard demands stiffer tests. There are harder impacts, there are more impacts across a wider range of areas on the helmet, and there are also some glancing blows rather than just direct hits. This is Shark's first lid to meet that new standard, and there's a reassurance that comes with that in terms of safety. It's also approved by the ACU for racing and track use in this country, though it feels more like the sort of lid that will appeal to someone who's likely to race at Santa Pod rather than someone who's going to be competing at Brands Hatch. As for sizing, the Spartan RS comes in sizes from extra small up to double extra large. There are two shell sizes to cover those helmet sizes. So helmets up to and including the size medium share the smaller shell, and then large, extra large and double XL share the bigger shell. The Spartan RS will launch with a price that starts at $299.99 for plain colours and goes up to $329.99 for two tone designs. That's a pretty good price for a helmet like this, which I'd say has a real premium feel that's actually better than the price would suggest. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Shark Spartan RS helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.